All right, we'll call this September meeting of the IMHS Board of Directors to order at 6.30 on today, August 18th, or October 18th. Um, start by reading the mission statement. IMHS serves animals and people by offering programs that promote animal health and responsible pet stewardship and foster compassion towards animals. Um, the September meeting minutes have been approved by a majority vote today. Um, and I have no business updates, so we'll go right into the shelter director's report. Yeah. All right. I'm so excited about this report. Is it a really, really good one? All right, so um, I actually have developed a news to report, which is fantastic. Um, it's going to be a really busy fourth quarter giving season. Um, starting up the direct mail campaign, um, which I will be working on really shortly. I already started doing hand addressed envelopes. This is going to take weeks and weeks and weeks to do. Um, we're doing hand addressed um, first class stamps to gifts of folks who have given gifts of 50 bucks or more in the last 12 months. Um, and the draft of the holiday appeal is done. Holiday newsletter, working on copy for that. Um, Ellen is not here, but she's gonna help me with a couple of stories this time, which I'm really excited about. We're gonna have some really heartwarming adoption stories. Um, there have been some really good adoptions lately of long-term animals that we're gonna feature in there, so it's gonna be good. Hoping to get that in the mail by December so it'll be nice that the holiday appeal goes out. A week later, people get our newsletter. Um, Yappy hours are going to be resuming. Next one is scheduled for November 7th. If any of you can attend, that would be fabulous. I think I'm going to focus this one on our foster volunteers. Foster volunteers, we don't see in the shelter quite as much, and we do, we're pretty much down to business with our animals. So a little time to hobnob and cultivate them would be great. Um, Five thirty. Five thirty to seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, membership renewals. I have crossed the threshold with membership renewals, and we're now sending them to people before their membership expires, as opposed to after their membership expires. It has happened now for the first time this month, so I'm excited about that. I'm hoping to curb lapses in memberships that way. Lots and lots of changes to the website since the last board meeting, and I just touch on a couple. Um, the front page does advertise our need for a volunteer coordinator, so we have a job ad on the front page. Also features the GuideStar logo in an ad that announces us as a GuideStar Exchange member, which is really important for our nonprofit status. Um, press, since the last board meeting, um, a press release was issued about the silent auction. It was picked up by the High Timber Times and the Flume. High Timber Times ran it again um, in yesterday's edition. It's on the front page. Um, Debbie Jessup, who is the executive director of the Onshits Foundation, came to do a site visit on September 26th. That went well. I hope that we get a grant from them. Um, a company called Kaijin that is located in Golden reached out to us um, and wants to explore um, joining us as a corporate sponsor, which would be our first, and that would be really exciting. Um, I sent them comprehensive information. Um, they're, uh, responded back, said that they're particularly interested in our canine enrichment program and also in our lifeline transfer program. Key thing about the lifeline transfer program, we really emphasize the need to um, have extra funding for our veterinary services budget. Um, I am really hoping that they will come through for us in at least one of those capacities. This week they did overnight um, about $150 worth of gifts for the silent auction. We made two gift baskets out of it. Lots going on with the silent auction, everyone is well aware of that. Um, with regard to shelter operations, just a couple things to report, and I'll let Nicole start reporting on shelter operations for the most part from now on. Um, Bernard's performance review was done this week. Um, Brandy's last day was the 29th. We've gone from a staff of seven to a staff of three in the last 12 months. Um, we changed the door codes, and we are interviewing actively for a volunteer coordinator. The clinic has done 168 surgeries since the clinic opened. Everyone knows that we received a really generous gift from a donor today um, to help pay for a 
an adjustable surgery table to save the backs of the medical team. So that was pretty exciting. Today felt like Christmas, it really did. Um, volunteer program. Um, we had such a fun meeting today with um, the, a teacher at West Jeff Middle School who I've had a rapport with for several months now. They sent lots of kids our way to volunteer. And he brought over a group of students um, from the National Junior Honor Society. They've chosen us to focus um, on as their chapter service project. So they came and took a tour of the shelter with us today. And, um, we did a needs determination meeting, and that was a lot of fun. Um, sparked some ideas, and they're going to get back with us on how they want to focus their volunteer service. Um, I brought this up with Stephen Wendy the other day, but um, I, I missed the board meeting where there was talk of a volunteer appreciation party, and we were tentatively thinking of November. I would really like us to bump that to spring of next year. Um, I have gotten really good feedback from the volunteers that um, the yappy hours that we've been doing have made them feel very appreciated, and that sort of served as many recognition and cultivation events for volunteers. We'll continue those as we're resuming now, and I think that um, the feedback that we're getting is that volunteers feel very appreciated and pretty happy right now. So um, I think it would do well if we could do a formal event in the springtime during National Volunteer Week. Um, Hopefully by then we'll have a volunteer coordinator on board to help coordinate it. If not, we can pull it off. I know we can, if you all agree with that. Um, and that is everything that I have. Are there any questions for me on my report? Do we need a motion or anything to go forward with the national or with the volunteer appreciation? Or do we just, at this point, just say, yeah, it's good, and let us know what else you need. You mean, we didn't, yeah, we didn't make, um, Pass a motion for the November one. Okay. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything else. So. Um, I do want to turn over to Nicole. If we got next year, we should just budget for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 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 Please. Um, so 57 total intake for the month, uh, 65 adoptions, uh, unfortunately, uh, five deaths, two reclaimed, 24 in foster, and one transferred out of the blue house objects. Questions on numbers? We looked at the numbers for the first two weeks of this month, and we're almost at the total we intake are. for last month. Super excited we're about October. We're rocking it this month. We are. Uh, a few other fun things to chat about. Um, you have a new transfer relationship with the Cortez Animal Shelter. Uh, they reached out to us a few weeks ago. Only had space to take one dog. Took the one. Um, he was awesome and gone in a day, I think. Uh, and we took five more yesterday. Uh, Southwest corner in Colorado. Um, rekindled our relationship with Fort Morgan um, after the rainbow problem from before. Um, we're now dipping on arrival. We're now dipping on arrival. Um, they're super grateful to have us as an ally. Um, whether I want to mention it or not, <laughs> but, um, we did take in a transfer from uh, Valencia County in New Mexico after a, an SOS and they were having um, issues with a hoarding case, so we kind of had to help clean out their shelter. And, Bless you both <laughs> for being there to help with our frozen little puppies. Um, Busterfest was on the 6th. Um, Busterfest was a bit of a bust. I think it was the coldest day we've had so far this year, at least since I've been here. Um, did have 14 volunteer hours, 26 bucks in, in donations, and a few referrals for adoption. So it wasn't a total loss um, inside events from now on. And they gave out all the second option for us. They did. Like 80 of them. They did and came back with none, so that was good. Um, I'm taking an active interest on in our Facebook page. I think it needs to be more active. Um, as far as adoptable animals, events that are going on, I think it's a really great way to um, give volunteers recognition for what they do, as well as maybe promote um, volunteerism and get some new faces in there. Um, and on that note, I made a little video uh, working on getting it uploaded to YouTube. It's basically volunteers in action through the inspirational music. Um, and I'm hoping that that video on Facebook and maybe even on our website um, and on our YouTube channel will 
just how to uh, recognize these volunteers for what they're doing and uh, maybe inspire a few new people to come forward. Uh, so that will be on our Facebook page tomorrow. Uh, so keep an eye on that and um, look for at least weekly posts to uh, what's going on. Can, can I point out one thing? I remember a while back, um, a shelter off of the East Coast made an awesome video, but they used copyrighted music. So I just want to make sure we're not using anything that's copyrighted. It is copyrighted, but there's a credit, and so I think that's a loophole. Okay. We'll double check. Because yeah, it was a big stink, and they got sued, and all sorts of stuff. I'll double check. Before I hit the button, but thank you for that. Who were the... Um, we had five animals die, I just don't remember seeing anything about that. Yeah. It, was, it was Abigail crushing her kittens, wasn't it? Oh, it was the whole litter. Infants. It was a mom that her whole litter did not survive. Okay. Yeah. Um, we picked these, this was the cat that we picked up who had given birth to kittens at Denver Animal Control the night before. Yeah, they were like in a day old. Yeah, so we, huh. we picked up one day olds and by the end of the week, sort they sort of didn't make it one by one. So, um, which was really unfortunate. We moved them from the shelter to a foster home and back to the shelter and we weren't able to save any of them. So they didn't thrive. the Operations Committee report? Uh, well, we'll we'll yeah. 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 Probably another monitor. The monitor we have, um, we're not happy with. Still waiting to hear about the dental machine. We should be hearing something soon on that. Um, I think that the last we heard was that Joyce said we were definitely getting the dental machine and it will be in November. It'd be nice to see that before the end of the year, wouldn't it? I'll follow up with her on that right around the first one. Um, yeah, pretty much it. What do you got? Have we found a monitor that's going to work for us yet? I've found one that I like, but I want to see it hands on first. Okay. That's um, so we're trying to get hold of the drug rep when I may go through a different company. Um, Cause she's not. Well, she's not responding to that, but at any rate, I think it would be a good one, but we do want to see it hands on first because it's kind of six And there's so still the, somewhere between 1000 or to $1,200 that that school raised. Do you remember that? That was going to go towards surgery equipment, nice. and we've never spent that. So, that is How much is it? Was it 1000 to 1200 the pie eating contest? Do you remember that? Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought we spent that already. In the no. Back. Okay. No, we've never used it. So. You guys have some money. <laughs> Did you guys ever get your chair? Did you want it? The stool? Uh, well, we don't won't need it now. Oh. We stole one from the. They took oh, the they took okay. one from yes, the table. sidewalk sale. <laughs> 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 it's Christmas in July. Okay, good. It's okay, fundraising committee. Yeah. Well, we've been busy. It's almost yeah. here. Okay. And actually, I, I talked to a few people within the last 48 hours, and we decided we have right now, and there's more coming. I mean, I had calls today. Uh, people want to move things up, whatever. But right now, we have 257 items from the um, wow. collection. And the, 
the retail value on that, the ones, there's a few that we don't have the values yet, but very few. But the retail value is $17,920. I don't know that we've ever had that. Uh, at least not since I've been It was only 15000 yesterday. <laughs> well, I was kind of holding back on more of it. I told her yesterday, 17000 She quickly posted it somewhere. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it's over. It's, I expect by the end of tonight, it will be over 18000 Um The starting bids, which were being really we're lowballing, I think, in my opinion. The, and if anybody wants to look at the spreadsheet and adjust them, we still have time to do that. But uh, we're pretty much lowballing them, I think. But because we had such a compressed period of time and kind of had worked so much on getting donations and not so much on advertising, I was really concerned about having people come in the door and making sure they fit. We didn't want to have a lot of things coming back. And plus, there's, you know, I mean, a lot of things we see we like. We can help bid those things up, get them, or lose them to a higher bid. The starting bids, which are low, um, is $5,655 right now. So I think it's safe to say I expect that we're going to be more than that. I did a quick look at what we had last year and with the raffle ticket sales, the sidewalk sale, which we're not doing. Um, I think we came in right around 6100 So I think we're going to, I think we're going to beat that probably fairly easily beat that um, by the time we have everything in. Um, so. I would just say, you know, thank you. Everybody's done a little bit here and there, or a lot here and there. But you know, I love the pre-registration form. Um, you know, if you guys can just send it to your friends, anybody you think that might, you know, be able to come. You know, and people that are giving me items, uh, I'm telling them about it. They're interested in trying to get out there or have somebody bid for them. So the more we get the word out. What I did do was I started talking about what if, you know, thinking what could we do, and I, I think where we're at right now, if we just made an executive decision. I wasn't sure how Cindy, but I thought she would accept it. But we're going to move up the starting time. Still ended at 4, but we're actually going to move it up to 1.30. And I'm hoping we'll be in a position where we can start the registration table at 1.15. That way people can sneak in and start looking around, whatever. Because I think with this many items and with the space that we have, uh, we're going to need to have you know as much time. You know, I think if we had more time, we could have higher bids, too. But I think two and a half hours is better than two hours. So we'll see what we can do. One thing I would ask for those that are going to be there, you know, I'll, we can do it while we're there, but I think it might be wise if we shuttle our cars over to the nearby park and ride um, because there's really somewhat limited space there. When I've been there before, they had all the sand, the dirt area that you can park on, but that's closed off now. So I think if we can, you know, try to do that while we're there, we might uh, make some more room for people to come in. That's a good um, idea. Yeah, and I think we're going to start at 11 o'clock down there. I might need one more car. I haven't talked to you, but maybe we'll, one more car to bring some things down. I've got Rebecca and Cheryl doing that. Um, and we might take some. Or, yeah, if you want to come on, get some too. But, and then I know we're going to move some of the van, but we're also going to need some tables and chairs. And I don't want anything breakable in the van. I don't think we can throw everything in there. So Is the shelter open or closed during the option? Open. Okay. <coughs> But she's sending her husband to bed, right? <laughs> so um, she's sending a proxy. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's really. Anybody good. that wants to meet at 10:50 to carpool over from the park and ride. Yeah, we're going to meet up over there and just you know, come over with the things. That's why I can't have a full car because we're going to start bringing Marta and Scott back over there. So I think, I mean, there's still a few more things we need to tie up loose ends. I think you might be over tomorrow to help tomorrow night. Cheryl's. Working tonight on the audit or the auction program, and I met with her last night to review that. So I think we're, you know, getting that wrapped up. It's probably going to be printed and ready by Saturday morning. So she's going to have to work with assembling that. But I think we're going to have seven to eight people. I wasn't sure, Steve. Are you going to be there? Do you think early? I, I just found out today I have Saturday off, so I'll be there. Good. Okay. <laughs> I think we're going to have plenty there to help get prepared. But I, and I would like if we could start at eleven, so we can stop and eat. Maybe you can take different shifts, but I would really like to support the ranch and us being there too. Um, so that should be good. And um, lately, one of the, the wives of one of the the one that plays the harmonica in the band, Tony. She's my best bud. She's called today with three more donations. I didn't so. even know he was married. Yeah, Angela yeah. Bassano. So she works with the save the what is it? Save, save the yellow barn or preserve the yellow barn oh, foundation. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, so a lot of these people will be coming in. But I, you know, there's still a few more things left. I may shoot you guys an email if there's a critical. I mean, there's still some baskets. Cheryl's picking up some plastic because we're out of plastic. But, um, you know, still some things we need to do, loose ends. But I think it's going to come together. <laughs> I don't know why we'll through it, but it's going to come together. But thank you so far for everything. I don't know if you have anything for me. But if you 
Well, I, I just like to say that you've done an amazing job, Deb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Thank you. My OC is on my own. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't do not start to lose fats or whatever. Yeah, Sunday was a hard, long day, but we got through it and fairly unscathed. I like what oh. you were doing up there. Yeah. I'm sorry you missed it. Me too. Yeah, it was, it, it was, but, I mean, it was intense. Mm -hmm. We were rocking it, but. And what time do you want us at your house then to pick up, pack up cars? Um, actually, if you want to pack up cars, I don't know if you guys have a garage. I know Rebecca no. doesn't have a heated. You can actually come over, and I only need a couple more, but if you want to come over tomorrow sometime, we can oh. pack up your car with some things and then okay. we can bring it down. You can leave it in the car until Saturday morning, but we can find things. If you don't have a heated garage, we can find things at yeah. night. And I don't know, I mean, it's supposed to be very nice on Saturday, so we're really planning on moving tables out for membership and for registration out front. That'll give us more space. Rebecca's happy about that. Oh, um, So, but yeah, you can come over anytime tomorrow. Okay. That's it. Okay, great. Were you going to talk about the next fundraising event that you're starting? Yeah, yeah, I was going to do that like well. next weekend. I will say this. Once we get done with this, we can talk about getting those thank you notes out. And I'm planning on calling Saturday night or Sunday. The people that aren't there, if there's anybody that wins a bid and they're not there, but we do, you know, we'll, we'll have a little at least email committee meeting to talk about how to do the, you know, what do we want to do with thank yous. We know what we want to do. We may need to ask some people to help out. Mart has already volunteered to, you know, help out where some of us have maybe 30 or so we've got to contact. That's just insane. But Let's just split them up and get them Yeah, yeah, we, we want to get that done really quickly. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the next fundraising event soon. <laughs> As soon as you've rested. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Deb. Uh, tech committee reports? Um, no report. There's really nothing going on technology wise since the last meeting. The grant report's about the same. I, since the last meeting, I believe um, I had a long phone conversation with the director of the uh, Laureate of Boyd Charitable Trust asking questions about the grant that we submitted in March. Um, hopefully we'll hear something back from them before the end of the year. Um, that's about it for grants right now. Finance, maybe? Wait. Um, we're starting to put together the 2013 budget. Um, I got to sit down with Marta yesterday to talk about some of our expectations for next year, some changes um, that we want to make to things um, for budgeting, particularly with payroll, so Marta actually knows what she has to work with, with um, her staff and whatnot. Um, also, thinking about the budget, I was going to ask the Operations Committee, and I don't know who all is on it, is it just you two and Marta? Or what are you on operations? Nicole's on it. And me, of course. And Matt, right. Okay. Um, what I wanted you guys to kick around is the possibility of uh, hiring a very part time vet tech to fill in to help. So we have the weekly spay neuters, um, the money would basically just be redirected, and I actually think we'd probably save money doing it this way versus sending them down to <clears throat> spade today. Um, but I don't want to put you guys on the spot. I just want you guys to kind of talk about it, think about it, see if it would make sense, because um, it seems like that's support that you guys just aren't able to find volunteer-wise right now. Um, so yeah, think about it, uh, and then let's talk more about it too so I can get the numbers in the budget. <clears throat> um, on that same thread, if you guys can look at the PL, the new format that I'm using, this is what I'm planning to use for 2013. I just want to get everyone's <coughs> opinion. Is this easier to read than having the five different reports to put back and forth yes. in front of us to make a little more sense? Um, is there anything that you'd like to have in here or see different that is not in here? Or? Good format, you guys think? Moving forward? Like yeah, that. I like it. Okay. Perfect, because I didn't want to change it. <laughs> <laughs>
restricted funds, you'll see that we've blazed through most of our restricted funds. We're down to just over $400 in the foster home <coughs> and Pedicaid. And just so you guys know, there's $75 in that Pedicaid fund that has been there for about forever. That program was originally developed to try to help people who were adopting animals from us that we knew would have significant veterinary bills after adoption that we could say, hey, we know that this is going to cost you a lot of money and we've got this program that can support you. Um, there's only $75 in it. We've rarely used it. I'd actually like to see that money used rather than just sitting there and then I'd like to probably see the program go away. Either that or really, let's start using it. <laughs> How much are those insulin shots for the baby? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but the, the caveat is that they would have to adopt yeah, to get the funding. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, And then you can see we've got the 26, 110, 88 in the shelter capital fund. We haven't had much added to that recently, um, just little bits of interest here and there. Um, operating reserve report. I don't know if you guys saw, remember that we're working on liquidating our investments and uh, kind of reinvesting them according to our investment, investment policy that we approved earlier this year. And <clears throat> I haven't made a whole lot of progress. We did liquidate the Exxon stock, which is great, so we're not uh, done something quite so volatile. Uh, but <clears throat> in working on opening the new accounts, we had chosen the banks that we wanted to go with and had the interest rates all picked out and everything and found out that they only offered that for personal accounts and not business. So I'm back to the starting point of figuring out where we're going to send this money. And for the time being, it's just sitting in the uh, accounts, the investment accounts that we've had it in. But I will have that done before the end of the year. And then on our budget versus actual, I didn't want to get too, too detailed because I think you guys can actually read through and maybe just ask some questions if you're seeing anything you want to know about. <clears throat> but I did want to point out that the thrift store earned far over what we had budgeted. They did a sidewalk sale last month and just had an awesome month altogether. We purchased Safeway gift cards. They're reloadable cards. And in case anyone doesn't know, they're at the shelter. They are loaded with $10 on them. You can purchase them for $10 and then go reload them at Safeway before you uh, purchase your groceries. And then INHS gets 5% back on all the money that you load on them. So and your cashier is, will be very confused with what you're asking them to do. Oh, really? I, I haven't run into that. One, of, one of my store was super flustered. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to put more cash on it. Yeah, put it. cash on it before I before she rang out my groceries. Yeah, I think I'm going to go to oh, customer service to She has to call a manager. She <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we okay. should, I, I think we just go to the customer service desk. No, I've, first I've done it um, oh, in the grocery line twice now. Huh. I, and customer service is easier, I think, because they do expect that. Yeah. Right. In the cashier, you have to catch before they start ringing your groceries. Yeah. My Safeway never has anybody at the customer service desk. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm sorry that it's not as easy as... Yeah, don't talk. No. <laughs> Super easy, you guys. You should do it. The safe way up here sounds easy. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm. So, so yeah, five percent back to the shelter for the groceries. Steve has had trouble using it at the fuel place, but you can theoretically use it for your fuel, your groceries, and everything, and have five percent come back to NHS. That's awesome. Great. Uh, so you'll see on the expenses that the actual animal service expenses were quite a bit higher than what we budgeted. We just had an awful lot going on last month. A lot of blood work, a lot of dentals, um, a lot of animals that spayed a day. So, and a lot of the expenses are a little bit higher than what's budgeted because we expense the non-monetary donations every month now. Mm -hmm. So that 1822 that you're seeing in income for the actual, that's $1,822 of <clears throat> goods that were donated over the month, we expense those out in each appropriate category at the end of each month as well. So everything's a little inflated on the expenses. But overall, we budgeted for almost a $1,000 loss and we had a $2,300 profit. So great month. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm.
I don't have any questions, but the Reloadable Circular gift cards has yes. made the next newsletter, so that's going to be out there. Oh, cool. Very good. What do you guys think about taking those to the um, membership table on Saturday? you think it might be worthwhile? Anything could happen, right? We know a lot of the people who are coming. Yeah. So we can, you know, we're bringing a cash box anyway. Right. <laughs> Just don't, yeah. don't, let Just don't, <laughs> let <laughs> don't let Matt tell his story. <laughs> yeah, that will be stepping. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Wendy, just, I don't know if I forwarded any of the information to you, but uh, the Alliance of Nonprofit Insurance that we get our insurance mm -hmm. through um, is forming a federal credit union for nonprofits. Oh. And it's not going to be anytime soon. Not soon enough. To oh, okay. I think it is. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you'd like to take 20 minutes to fill out a survey. I can forward you the. Yeah. Um, but for future, that might be. You know, it's not going to. I think they need. You know, they need to raise. You know, hundred million dollars or whatever. To, oh, okay. To get started, and they have grants to get started, but uh, I'll, I'll forward this to you. It might help. Okay. Um. The longest term investment that we've decided to make is a one-year CD for the Shelter Capital Fund. And, uh, you know, it'll just, the, the rest is all going to be very liquid, so, you know, we could do something, we can move things around early next year with most of it. Um, the only one that won't be, we won't be able to do anything with is that Shelter Capital Fund. I'm sure it's going to be a while until then. They get it started. Yeah. Again. But it might be a good option for some of us to have a savings nice. account. I, yeah, I was really disappointed to find that we can't get yeah. the rates oh, no. that you can on the personal accounts for this. Yeah, I would guess a lot of people are. That's why they're mm -hmm. starting, yeah, that's too bad. starting to organize it. All right. Anything else for Wendy? Uh, moving on to open business. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about the uh, the confusion in the language of the director application. I haven't seen any comments or any suggestions for rewording it, so that's still open. Um, and the same with the emergency euthanasia section of the euthanasia policy. Um, that's you know a big deal to change. So. If we do want to try to make any changes to that, we need to start. Did, did I ever respond to the question of me stepping off of the... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you did say okay, that, okay. that you would be willing to do that. Um, I mean, I think at, as we left it at the end of the last board meeting was, you know, in the situation, the three people on the committee get called first, or if there's time, we talk to Kathy or Dave. I mean, it's, the way that it's written, it's, it's pretty, I mean, either you, me, or Cheryl have to make the decision, and there's no leeway in it. So even for an, emer a, an extreme emergency like the, the situation that brought this up, um, the policy doesn't have enough leeway in it. So, um, if you did want to step down from the committee and Dave or Kathy wanted to get on, that would probably expedite the process a little bit. Um, so you're <clears throat> you were talking about just um, stepping down from the executive committee right. and letting one of them. Oh, okay. Well, one question I had is, <clears throat> since we've come on the board, has there ever been? any action taken by the executive committee that the board wasn't fully notified about. I don't want Steve stepping down if... I have had to approve an ex uh, emergency euthanasia. Other than the euthanasia, though? Yeah. Yeah. And not in, yeah, not in the year that I was president of it. So, so the executive committee as it's set up is it, its primary indeed the only function that it's had over the past year and a half is to deal with emergency euthanasia. Is that correct? Yeah. 
but it is created to deal with any emergency situation. Yeah. Where we don't have time to get nine people to vote. So, um, I mean, I think, I think it's, if, if you read that paragraph, I think it's clear that the policy could use some work. So we probably want to rewrite, rewrite it. But, I mean, if, uh, if Dave, you or Kathy would like to um, take Steve's place on the committee, we can formalize that here. We have enough people. So let's. I guess I'd like just some more time to go through the policy and just look at the whole thing and see. Um, I don't know. Marty, you know, my opinion is, are, we, into it are we uncomfortable just tabling this until the next annual meeting when we know we're going to have the majority of our membership there? I mean, it comes up so rarely that perhaps it's not necessary for Steve to step down and for one of you to join the executive committee. Um, when I think we've pretty much established what our procedure is going to be in the meantime. So. I know my concern well, it come come would be to wait, not have special members meeting, wait until May, do what we need to, if anything, until then. And I mean, it's a rare instance that that happened. Right. Yes. It sort of saves us the work, and we have enough work to do. Mm -hmm. um, of course, hoping that it doesn't you know, pose a problem between now and May. I, I would be comfortable with waiting if everyone else is. I would, I'm comfortable with waiting as well. <clears throat> what I don't want to do is have cap your eye on the executive committee if the executive committee is handling a lot of other issues other than you think. We're just figure out if the primary and the only issue that it's ever addressed is venue, then they should have probably one of us up here. Yeah. <coughs> it is the only one and it would you know ideally this doesn't come up again. Should it come up again though, it will expedite it and allow us to stay within the policies that we already have until next May when we can make amendment yeah. to the euthanasia policy, which can't happen until then. So, so to me it makes happened? sense. Were you just not able to get a hold of one of the executive committee members? Or did you just yeah. not know? Um, you tried to get a hold of me and I wasn't reachable. Yeah, I tried to immediately call Dr. Dave. When I could reach him, I reached Happy. And I think a lot of that is because we do tend to work pretty close on that. I think it was just the thought to reach me with the cows under anesthesia decision. Right. Which, which so I think we all agree with. Yeah. The, the well, problem is, is it goes against the policy. Right. And, right. and right. therefore, by making a quick change that would you know, take all of a minute tonight. But Mara could have gotten a hold of one of the executives. I could. She have. just didn't know. Um, yeah. But, and now she knows. So. But, but, at the, but, at, yeah, but at the same time, it's not, there's nobody on the committee who's educated in veterinary medicine who might have alternatives or anything like that. So to me it makes more sense to have a vet tech or the but vet. But she wouldn't call just one of you. But that would have added time and I think in this well, instance. That's, yeah, and that's part of the problem is time sensitive. Also if you run into a gray area where maybe the off-site vet is saying, well I don't think this is treatable, we should do this, we may feel differently or know that, that we can do something. So, but in that case, I mean, I'm very reachable. Dave, a lot of times he's in surgery or something and he's not able to answer his cell phone. So right. if you guys are comfortable with that, if something does come up again and you want input, you know, I'm having stand the executive committee, then, you know, you can reach me at least if you need some input. Well, I would say I also want to double check the bylaws because I thought it listed in there who was on the executive committee. It doesn't. It doesn't? It says yeah. the president to two other directors. Yeah, it's the oh, president okay. and two okay. directors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't uh, but the, so the euthanasia policy is, but there, there's two main problems that I see with it are the emergency euthanasia specifically only states in cases where survival is not probable and doesn't cover suffering. Um, so the, the way the policy is written right now, I don't think 
you know, an instance like this where, um, you know, the cat coming out of anesthesia would technically be covered under the emergency policy. So, you know, if we think we can get by with it until our next our next uh, members meeting, that's fine. But but I don't think we're covering all the bases where where we would consider something like this with the current policy. Also, the policy only refers to the executive committee as the EC. It does not specifically say executive committee. So I suggest we could just create a euthanasia committee or something like that. Yeah. Um, so do you think that works for you? I mean, to contact an executive committee if that person is in here? I mean, you guys are always going to either be reachable or not. If you're not, there's a dilemma anyway, probably. So, I mean, I can call you quickly. I can call Matt and he can call you quickly. Uh, or someone else on the executive well, I mean, I, I think it makes sense if there's time. time to call Dave or Kathy first because they may have a reason not to even bother calling us. Exactly. So, I mean, and essentially, we wouldn't have done anything different yeah. except yeah. this call. You know, okay. we would have gotten input yeah. from someone. Yeah, I think, because otherwise I'm just going to call Dave or Kathy as soon as I get off the phone with you, so, I mean, if... So we do want to add a revision to the euthanasia policy to our agenda for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Moving forward, it's not going to work for us. Yeah, and one thing we mind. probably don't have in there is, is using a, a site veterinarian, as I think in the euthanasia policy it says, that veterinarian has to contact executive committee. Yeah. Off-site veterinarian. Yeah. Is not going to probably do that, right. or you know, so we'll probably have to tweak that okay. as well. So it's just stuff that's coming up that mm -hmm. yep. just needs to be changed to fit better. So, okay, so we're going to table it then. We will, um, yeah, we will deal with it if we have to, mm -hmm. um, and um, we'll work on the some. Revisions to euthanasia policy. Do we still have a policy committee? But you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for this one in particular, we probably need everybody. Yeah. I mean, I know Mitch, Mitch did a, had a big part in writing this policy. Um, I mean, I, I can try and come up with some some wording that, that might be a little more clear and then run it by it all. Like, but if you have any suggestions on I mean I, I think it would be it's it would be important important to better define an emergency euthanasia and you know that would anything that doesn't have I think we have the policy says any other we have the board has 24 hours to vote after the form is sent out by um, so, so whatever suggestions you have on how we can define it better would, would be helpful. Okay. okay, I think that covers the open business. Does anybody have any new business? I don't know if it's new, but I don't know where things stood with the discussion about cameras or the thrift store. Yeah, we could talk about the cameras, I know, a few months ago, and I know we got cameras for inside of the, I don't know if they're in the surgical suite, but I know we have yeah, cameras yeah, now yeah. within, okay, within the shelter, and with, even though it turned off a banner, it wasn't stolen, it was lost, but there was whatever, but there were, was an incident before that I know that the thrift store, I talked with Daryl as well, they really would like to get um, cameras that can actually record too, so, um, he even said that he would be willing to kick in 200, and I said I'd be willing to kick in 100. I know there's a nice set for $400 that would do all of this um, that Ken could help install. But it's something, I don't know if it's critical for now for this meeting versus maybe the next meeting, but I would like to raise that as well that we consider that. I know that the thrift store really would like to have some kind of camera set up outdoors more so than indoors, but if there's enough outdoors and something they can record. Daryl thought he could get them, you know, 
the uh, workman to actually kick in some too. He was talking about it, but it seems like he's more, you know, talking about that, but not really coming through. But I mean, seriously, I think we've got of the four hundred dollars it would cost for this nice set that would do everything that they're looking for. I think two of us are willing to throw in three hundred dollars, so it's we're probably looking at one hundred dollars. Maybe uh, well, we shouldn't have to pay tax. Maybe we do, but whatever. I mean, it's. That's what we're probably looking at for IMHS to vote on. Can, you can't even ask how you have to pay tax because I know, IMHS right. doesn't have to. Can you um, just ask Ken to kind of um, prepare an, an outline of what you guys are looking at? I'm sure. assuming he's seen stuff and he'll probably... Actually, he's already bought it, but we can return it. He just bought it because he knew it was a great deal and they, they were going to run out of it. So, but we, we know we can easily return it to... I mean, we talked about that already. <coughs> So, but he can send you a list of exactly what it is that they're looking for, what this camera will do, um, and... And uh, I guess my question would be is, it's great to get the cameras, but we also need the medium for the recording. Because with what we have, we don't have enough extra space for another full set of cameras. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, now you're talking about it here. <laughs> is it, does it record the videotape? Does it, do we need a computer? Right, I will ask him to... to burn them on or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he seems to... Be savvy on that, so I'll have okay. to send something on that. Perfect. Are you, are you asking though for a hundred dollars? Well, I'm not asking it. right now at this meeting. I'm just asking that we think about, you know, about that, and I can propose something. I think through email, if need be. But I'd rather first go through the, you know, go through this process of where you understand, you guys talk and understand what they're looking for, and if you want to talk to Daryl too. Well, I, I guess I guess I'd like to see. I mean, a, a bunch of things come to my mind, which like we've dealt with is you, you don't have unlimited forever recordings. You know, so what's the recording gonna be? Who's responsible for checking them? Mm -hmm. When when something happens, I mean, do you wanna be able to keep a week's worth of recordings, a month's worth of recordings? That's all the type of stuff that I right. start. Yeah, and I know this is more out. than a day, I think it's a week, but yeah, I'll have them, you know, document for you and send that out to you. And in this no rush about, I mean, easily we can, this was on sale for two months in a row, Next month it may not be, but we can easily return it and then, you know, and I may even come up with the other 100 and just do a 200, 200 match with Daryl, I don't know. But anyway, it's, even then I still think the board needs to know and we just need to, like you said, there's a little bit more involved than in that. Just like I think Kim would be willing to install it too, but, you know, I have to make sure he tells me that. Because okay. I'll have him see something. Okay. This would be great to have. All right. Sign on since anybody who lose another 200 pound TV is going to get prosecuted. Okay, Anything else? Alright, we'll call the meeting to close at 718. Thank you.